Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, Fractal Bitcoin. How you doing? I'm Chris. This is your daily Bitcoin news video. Let's get to the price update. Right now you can see the price is $70,326. And the good thing about this is, you know, over the past four days, you could see these are daily candles. We've been coming up for the last four days. And today, which the candle will close in five hours, uh, what we've done is we've gone above this $69,000 level, which you see at the yellow horizontal line here. We've gone above it and we've come back and sort of tested it as support almost. I think we hit $69,200 or something. And now we're coming up. So that's a good sign. We could sort of test this as support and sort of bounce off it and then continue up. Uh, the whole market is very, very bullish. It's yeah, it's possible. And this is from the rational route. He says, Outflows continue at grayscale, but are offset by Fidelity and other ETFs. With markets closed over the weekend and a neutral start to the week, Bitcoin has maintained its upward trajectory. Yeah, and so if you look here, again, the ETFs are the big thing that's moving the Bitcoin market right now. And you can see on Monday, which is this column, which was yesterday, grayscale, the outflow was 5,005 Bitcoin, but the other... ETFs had good inflows and the the total was plus 222 Bitcoin on the inflow. That's why the price went up. And you can see this column on the right here. This is from Friday, March 22nd. And you can see there wasn't much inflow. And that's why the net outflow was 706 Bitcoin. And that's why, um, you know, maybe the price didn't move so much, right? So, uh, okay, this is an amazing excerpt from Parker Lewis's new book, Gradually Then Suddenly. And the forward was written by Marty Bent. Uh, I'm not going to read this. This is a lot of financial lingo that I actually don't understand, but I'll give you the gist of it. He's talking about hyper-Bitcoinization. And that, obviously, he's referring to when the world, when, when more and more of the world starts uh, dealing in Bitcoin as the reserve currency and everyone starts using it as the reserve currency, and that's hyper-Bitcoinization, right? The whole world is, has become uh, Bitcoinized, whatever. But what he's describing here is that the whole fiat system is crashing, and it's going to actually push up Bitcoin. That's essentially what he's saying. And we, we, we kind of know this, but it's nice when people with more technical ability and technical knowledge, they, they know exactly why that's the case, and they can prove it. So if you're financially, if, if you know what all this means, good for you. <laughs> um, maybe let me know in the comments. But anyway, I, I believe that's the summary of this. Here's some news about <clears throat> Hong Kong, just in Hong Kong to allow Bitcoin ETFs to be in kind. Yeah, and in kind means, we'll skip down here. This means customers can buy into and redeem out of the fund with Bitcoin instead of just cash in and out. So that means, so the ETFs here in the United States, you have to put in cash and then you can buy Bitcoin, you can buy the Bitcoin ETF in your, you know, uh, investment companies, in, in your investment account. But here in Hong Kong, if this goes through, you're, you're going to be able to actually put in Bitcoin if you want to sell it, or even buy Bitcoin in the ETF and then take it out redeem out in Bitcoin. So imagine they can take their retirement account, in, which is in cash in their investment fund, buy, bit, the, buy the Bitcoin ETF, and then withdraw that Bitcoin. Not just withdraw the cash value of the Bitcoin, but withdraw the Bitcoin itself. So that's very interesting. And uh, Bitcoin Archive says, are you watching SEC? And this could spark assets under management and volume in the fast growing region says Bloomberg's Eric Balkunas. So yeah, th and again, this is just proof that all these legacy financial institutions, they're, they're not only adopting Bitcoin, but they're actually going to start uh, adopting it even more and, and making it a lot easier for the average person to invest in Bitcoin, right? I thought this was interesting from Michael Sullivan here. Uh, and, and because I saw V for Vendetta and I love that movie, I really love that movie. But Michael says, V for Vendetta is the best movie ever created. V sacrifices himself and becomes a symbol 
allowing humanity to be free from the chains of oppressive government. Sound familiar? I personally believe this film helped to inspire Satoshi's anonymity after he created Bitcoin. All right, yeah, I mean, the similarity is there. You you know, if you've seen V for Vendetta, you, you can understand that. If you haven't seen it, you should see that movie. That's a great movie. Um, but yeah, as far as what he says in the last line here, this film, he believes this film helped to inspire Satoshi's anonymity after created Bitcoin. It's possible, but we don't know, right? And I guess we'll never know. But it is possible, for sure. Now here, let's get to some uh, bad news. Kevin Hart has sold his base C NFT for approximately $46,000, incurring a loss of over $200,000 from his original purchase price. Now, I'm only including this because it's, it's a Bitcoin show. Why are you talking about NFTs, Chris? Uh, for context, <laughs> this is what happens when you F around. You Sometimes you find out. And so, yeah, people get wrecked with these other S coins and with NFTs. So you got to be really careful. And here Wicked says, oof, Kevin Hart could have played it safe and just saved that money in Bitcoin. Would have been worth nearly twice as much by now. This is why we don't S coin, fellas. So yeah, it's just a word to the wise. It's rough out there. And there's a lot. It's, it's like gambling. If you want to gamble, you can gamble. But why? You know, why gamble when you have the real thing right here, Bitcoin? Um, here's some more uh, negative news. Cryptocurrency exchange KuCoin and two of its founders, Chun Gan and K Tang, have been criminally charged with Bank Secrecy Act violations and unlicensed money transmission offenses. This is from the United States Attorney's Office, Southern District of New York. And yeah, KuCoin, I don't know. Years ago, I did use KuCoin because it was a non-KYC exchange, right? And I, I think they're based in Hong Kong. And it was great. You just sign up for an account. You didn't have to give any of your personal information. And you could, you know, uh, they, they didn't have a fiat on-ramp, meaning you couldn't put in, there was no way to put in U.S. dollars. You have to either deposit a, some crypto or like a stable coin, which means you had to get that from somewhere else first from some on-ramp. But uh, anyway, they um, KuCoin did change to requiring KYC probably about a year ago, maybe more. But I guess now they're they're being charged and we, we never like to see this, but don't forget, you know, these branches of government, it's like their whole job is to go after people. And of course, they, they, they've been going after so many crypto players, so many crypto uh, platforms and companies and, and they don't know why either, right? They just sue them because, oh, you must not be able to do that. We're going to sue you. And then after a while, in, in, a lot, in, in a lot of these cases, the charges are just dropped because the government just wants to sue companies. They want to get money. They want to stifle the market. And, and, and it's, it might be changing now because, you know, crypto is more... Uh, more accepted now. It's be, it's being adopted slowly, but this is how government works. So as far as what these two guys and what KuCoin has done illegally, I have no idea. It's possible they've done nothing illegal, right? All right. Alex Gladstein says, the lesson of the great financial crisis is that the government will bail out the charlatans. Gains will be privatized. Losses will be socialized. And they thought they would get away with it. And they might have, were it not for Satoshi Nakamoto. Yes. Yeah, this is, uh, again, for context, right? I love, the line I love the best is, gains will be privatized, losses will be socialized. This is how the government works. When there's, a, when there's gains to be made, it goes to the few, few. The few rich people or the few, you know, select companies you know, the select government vendors, like all the military industrial complex uh, companies that provide, that are manufacturers for the, for the military, right? Stuff like that. The gains will be privatized, but the losses will be socialized. When the financial crisis happens, who pays for it? You and me. And all the regular people, we all pay for it. And that's not fair. 
This is not fair, but this is under the fiat regime, and this is fiat doesn't work, and this is one of the reasons why, because it be, just becomes a scam. In a Bitcoin standard, this can't happen, pretty much. It can happen maybe a tiny bit, but nothing like this, nothing like it happens with fiat. So, all right, this is a very controversial tweet today from Max Kaiser, the Bitcoin bull himself. The fall of Rome versus the U.S. empire. Exact copy edition. Infrastructure collapse. Francis Key Bridge collapse. Boeing. Barbarians invading southern border. Mm-hmm. Decadence. Epstein and P. Diddy. Mm-hmm. Money printing, which in Rome was coin clipping. Mm-hmm. And he says, uh, Jesus slash Bitcoin. And first of all, these first four, I, I, it, these are obvious. Hello. These are obvious. This is correct. Uh, and the four, fifth one here with Jesus slash Bitcoin, a lot of people in the comments were upset. Like, how dare you compare Bitcoin to Jesus and stuff? And it's like, would you calm down? <laughs> like, he's just making a point. This is how we learn. This is how we convey concepts to each other. We compare things. We contrast things. And so there are similarities between Jesus and Bitcoin, for sure. And there are many dissimilarities, right? There's many ways in which they're not the same. We get that, but he's making a point. So just take his point, right? Now, and again, Max is an extreme guy. You can agree with him or not. It's fine, but just relax. We're all learning. We're all, especially Bitcoiners, all the Bitcoiners, we need to be friendly to each other. We can have differences, but that's fine. We're overthrowing the entire global monetary system right now. We're in the middle of it. So we can't start being idiots to each other and bickering and <laughs> no, relax. Relax. All right, just in more uh, fiat uh, context, just in swift to launch new central bank digital currency platform in 12 to 24 months reported by Reuters. Yeah, the CBDC is financial slavery, and every country is pushing this. And by the way, the SWIFT is the uh, the international system of of sending money internationally and settling the you know transactions of of money and securities internationally. The SWIFT system is what coordinates all that, I guess. Uh, but yeah, they're planning on a CBDC, and we know this is coming. And the CBDC is financial slavery, so we have to uh, resist it. And if if it happens, it's probably going to happen, but we just have to basically try not to use it. Or if we're forced to use it a little bit, then we use it minimally, whatever. I don't know. Well, I don't know how this is going to shake out with these CBDCs, right? It's kind of crazy. All right. Michael Saylor, though, he says, speaking of context, Michael Saylor Every monetary system ever established collapsed because of inflation. Think about that. <laughs> There's a clip here too. I'm not going to play it, but it, that's the quote. That's the important quote. Every monetary system ever established collapsed because of inflation. And fiat, the US dollar, and all the other fiat currencies are no exception. Bitcoin is different. Bitcoin is not inflationary. Um, this, now, this is a really good question because a lot of people are in debt, right? And this question is about if you're in debt, should you pay off your debt or should you buy Bitcoin or what percentage of each should you do? Should you pay off some of the debt and but use use the rest or the most of your money to buy Bitcoin? Because look, the 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 strategy here is very simple. If you if you know, if you just pay the minimum amount on your debt, but you buy as much Bitcoin as you can, probably in five years, because the value of the Bitcoin is going to go up so high, you'll be able to pay off your debt easy. And and you will have gained so much value, you'll pay off, even if you have a lot of debt, you'll pay it off with much less of your own, of, of your own U.S. dollars, basically. So Mark C, his question was, at what, at what interest rate would you start to pay down the debt versus putting that extra month, extra dollars into Bitcoin? And there were only a few responses. Uh, this one says, in the long term, carry as much debt as you can. Bitcoin outperforms interest and fees by a gigantic margin. 
So what th- that's the point of keep your debt, but you know might have to pay some, you know, minimum monthly fee on your or, or minimum minimum monthly payment on your debt, but then stack Bitcoin because it'll outperform uh, the interest and fees by a lot. And uh, this guy says 25%, but I don't know what that means in terms of tw- what 25%. But anyway, this is interesting. So are you in debt? Are you wondering how to get out of debt? Bitcoin is, is a way that Bitcoin is something that can maybe help you get out of debt. Maybe look into it. Now, this is pretty cool. This, these are Bitcoin trading cards. Yeah, look at these trading cards. And they're, it's art, it's educational, and it's fun. You can collect them. You can hand them out to orange pill people. Yeah, sharing the gift of a proper orange pill is the best gift you can ever give. So you can buy a bunch of packs, like 50 packs or 100 packs, and hand them out. I'm definitely going to buy some. There's a bunch of different uh, ones. Anyway, this is pretty cool. I'm definitely going to buy some and try to hand them out. There's even some rare ones. But these are physical cards, and on the card there's education. So it's like, you know, you can buy, you can hand out packs to your family and friends, and they'll get, they'll become educated about Bitcoin at minimum. And uh, yeah, and it's fun. It's a fun way to do it. Another way to do it with merch to share the love or or, uh, in terms of Bitcoin merch is this Bitcoin Grenade Signature Series Max Kaiser Edition. Yeah, and I saw this and I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, whatever. And and then I was like, well, what what is it? Is it it like a, a mug? Do you drink coffee out of it? And so I asked... Uh, these guys. I said, excuse my ignorance, but does it have any functionality? Like, is it a water bottle or something? And they replied back that the top comes off and it holds two open dimes in the lid, or you can s- store smaller stuff inside. So yeah, look, the it, you can screw it out. You can put a couple open dimes in there. And here's another picture here. I don't know. This is kind of cool. And by the way, open dimes are these little USB sticks it's a little USB drive. It's secure, and you can basically put some Bitcoin on there and just give it to people. Um, yeah. So that I, and 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 I'm trying to still figure out like how I might use these open dimes ever if I do. Maybe I could you know give them to viewers of my channel, right? I don't know, but it's kind of cool just to to get people into Bitcoin. It's an easy way to onboard people if they're interested, and it's fun too. Now, just to finish up with a couple uh, more general items. This has become us. Wealth without work. Knowledge without character. Yeah, from Gandhi. These are the seven blunders of the world that lead to violence from Gandhi. Wealth without work. Pleasure without conscience. Knowledge without character. Commerce without morality. Science without humanity. Worship without sacrifice politics without principle. Yeah, how many of these are we violating? Or or how many of these blunders are are we making right now in the world? And a better question, how many of these blunders are you making in your personal life? So this is great to reflect on yourself, maybe your spouse, maybe your family. This is just, this is the kind of learning and contemplation that'll help us in our lives so much. And don't forget, take it daily, take your pills daily, the orange pill and the purple pill purple pill, Bitcoin, and Noster. Yeah, we love it. This is our website, fractalbitcoin.com. Click this link at the top here and join our locals community, which is this. Yeah, it's free to join. Come hang out. And don't forget, every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, we live stream the Bitcoin panel. Fridays at 4 p.m., I get a bunch of awesome guests. We talk Bitcoin for an hour. It's live. You can hang out and chat with us. It's really fun. So that's it for today. That's the news. Oh, let me just look at the chart. Yeah, it hasn't, Bitcoin price hasn't moved. But if you'd like to uh, follow the channel or subscribe to this channel, please do. We're trying to grow. And uh, I will see you tomorrow for, the, for another Bitcoin news video. All right, see you.